The Nazis were evil and did terrible things. That statement is obvious. And yet, is it so obvious who the Nazis actually were? Or who collaborated with them and who fought against them? As the terrible times of the Second World War are slowly passing out of living memory, history is becoming a little confused. Some basic things which were once obvious no longer are so. Recent surveys found that 41% of Americans and 66% of American millennials cannot say what Auschwitz was. Similarly, 34% of Europeans know little or have never heard of the Holocaust. One thing that is increasingly confused is Poland's role in the Second World War. Over the past few years, I have seen attempts to shift responsibility and to lump the Polish state and the Polish nation with the perpetrators, to turn Poles from victims into collaborators, and to make Poland co-responsible of Nazi German atrocities and war crimes. The reason I'm making this video is I was recently shown this leaflet, which was circulated in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, New York City. The anti-Nazi leaflet warns inhabitants of a number of symbols. The swastika, which was a symbol of the Nazi party and later of Germany, and was seen as a race emblem of Germanism. The 1488, which refers to the 14-word slogan, derived from Hitler's Mein Kampf, and the eighth letter of the alphabet, forming the initials HH for Heil Hitler. The symbol of the 211 boot boys, who are a skinhead crew, which affiliate with neo-Nazis. Finally, we have the Odel rune and the Wolfsanger, both of which are widely used by neo-Nazis and historically were used by Nazis from both the SS and the Wehrmacht. These are all despicable symbols that represent a murderous and barbaric ideology and deserve to be condemned. Among these odious symbols, however, there is one that does not belong there because it stands against everything these Nazi and neo-Nazi symbols represent. That symbol is the Polish Kotwica, or anchor. It is an emblem of the Polish underground state and of the Polish Home Army. This is a symbol of the resistance, of Poles who stood up against the barbarity of the German Nazi occupiers. That barbarity started on the very first day of the invasion of Poland and continued until the very end of the war. The Kotwica symbol references that barbarity. The symbol combines the letters P and W. These are the initials of the slogan Pomstime Wawer, We Shall Avenge Wawer, which refers to one of the first of many large-scale massacres of Polish civilians by German troops, that one conducted in 1939. The occupation of Poland by Nazi Germany was brutal. The Nazis were not just hostile to the existence of a sovereign Poland, they were hostile to the very existence of the Polish culture and people. This was outlined in the genocidal Generalplan Ost, which the Germans implemented after they took control of Poland. According to the plan, in the short run, Slavic people were to be Germanized, enslaved, or eradicated. The extermination of Poles was planned in the long term, and started through the mass murder of the Polish political, religious, and intellectual elites in order to make resistance efforts more difficult. The Germans had prepared prescription lists, which identified more than 61,000 Polish elite and intelligentsia leaders. Many of those people were killed by the Germans during operations Intelligence Aktion and AB Aktion. Furthermore, 2.3 million Polish citizens were deported to Germany as forced laborers. Hundreds of thousands of Poles were sent to concentration and extermination camps. The Germans also conducted cultural genocide. The Nazis looted some 516,000 individual art pieces. They shut down schools, cultural institutions, and all pre-war newspapers. During the war, some 6 million Polish citizens died, including 3 million Polish Jews. This represents roughly 20% of the population or one in five people. The Poles died through shelling and bombing campaigns, in mass executions, through forced starvation, revenge murder, ill health, slave labor, and in concentration and extermination camps. During these terrible times, the Poles were not idle. The Polish government continued the fight in exile and never surrendered to Nazi Germany. Members of the Polish army, who escaped the occupation, continued the fight. Poles fought on almost every front under their own commanders as part of the Allied forces. Their contribution was significant. To give you just a few examples, in the air, the Poles distinguished themselves in the Battle of Britain, where the pilots from the Polish 303 Fighter Squadron Battalion claimed the highest number of any kills of any Allied squadron. On the sea, the Polish Navy took part in numerous operations, including those conducted against the German battleship Bismarck. On the land, the Polish troops of the Polish Second Corps, led by General Anders, captured Monte Cassino. In Poland, a Polish underground state was formed. It was a resistance that was both civilian and military. 
the Polish underground state was loyal to the government in exile and was seen in Poland as the legal continuation of the pre-war Polish state. It was the largest movement in all of occupied Europe, with some several hundred thousand members serving in the ranks of the Home Army, the Peasant Battalions and the National Armed Forces. This armed resistance carried out numerous operations. During these times, the PW of the Kotwica came to mean Polska Walcząca, or Fighting Poland. This was a symbol of the Polish fighting spirit, the spirit of a nation that refused to be broken or subdued. The symbol was so important to the resistance that Home Army Commander General Stefan Rowetsky issued an order specifying that all sabotage, partisan and military actions be signed with the anchor. The Polish resistance was involved in numerous skirmishes against the Germans and organized several executions of high-ranking Nazi officials, including SS Police Chief Franz Kuchera. The resistance played an important role in gathering intelligence, especially regarding the Holocaust. Polish officer Witold Pilecki volunteered to go as a prisoner to Auschwitz. He then provided the government in exile with reports about the atrocities committed in the extermination camp. Polish foreign minister in exile, Count Edward Draczyński, published the first official government report regarding the mass extermination of Jews in German-occupied Poland. Kurier Jankarski, a witness of the German atrocities in the Warsaw Ghetto, informed multiple foreign governments of the Holocaust and pleaded Roosevelt himself for help in ending the Holocaust. The Polish resistance also set up the Zagota Council for the Aid of Jews. One of the members, Irana Sendler, saved 2,500 Jewish children by smuggling them out of the Warsaw Ghetto. Poland, by the way, was the only occupied country where an organization was set up specifically to aid Jews. The Polish resistance led ultimately to the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. After years of occupation, the capital of Poland attempted to free itself. This is both one of the most heroic and tragic events of World War II. The boys and girls of Warsaw rose up and took on the German occupier. For 63 days, Warsaw stood alone, betrayed by its allies, as it slowly bled to death. The Germans, having killed some 200,000 people, proceeded to raise the city to the ground. The anchor to many in Warsaw symbolizes that event. Why am I saying all of this? All this is to say that the Poles as a nation and as a state did not collaborate with the German Nazi occupiers, unlike numerous other occupied nations. They did not collaborate militarily, fighting the Germans at every given opportunity, nor did they collaborate in general in the Holocaust. Statistics of the Israeli War Crimes Commission indicate that less than 0.1% of Poles collaborated with the German Nazis. The Poles represent the largest number of people who rescued Jews during the Holocaust, with over 6,000 recognized righteous among the nations. This despite the fact that sheltering or helping Jews was punished by the death penalty, a penalty which extended to that person's family, neighbors, and sometimes to entire villages. Of course, this is not to say that every Pole was a hero. There were, of course, Polish individuals who betrayed their country and their fellow citizens. But this is not the point of this video. My point is this, somehow merely 70 years since those tragic events, Poland is somehow finding itself in the camp of the perpetrators, our symbols somehow being linked to those of the Nazis and neo-Nazis. The anchor is a symbol of hope, that independence may be regained. Today it is a symbol that reminds us that our independence was hard fought. When you see this sign, do not confuse it with some neo-Nazi symbols. Think rather of Anna Smoleska, who designed the symbol and perished in a German extermination camp. Think of Jan Karski, who snuck into the ghetto of Warsaw and then tried to inform the world about the Holocaust. Think of Witold Pilecki, the man who volunteered to go to Auschwitz. Think of Irena Sendler, who risked her life to save 2,500 Jews. Think of the boys and girls of Warsaw who died in the tens of thousands to free themselves of Nazi German tyranny. If you ever do see this sign, find in it the same strength and honor the Poles found to do the right thing and to fight evil. Zrobiłem co mogłem dla Polski, dla moich poległych i umarłych już kolegów i koleżanek z Armii Krajowej. Teraz tu zwracam się przede wszystkim do wszystkich młodych Polaków. Wszystkich jest, wszystko jest w waszych rękach i w waszych sercach. Róbcie co możecie, żeby obronić prawdę żebyście nie musieli wstydzić się i przepraszać za winy niepopełnione przez waszych ojców, dziadów czy pradziadów.